This is To The Local. Well, to kick things off then, uh, if you just want to tell us a little bit about Lad then as a film. Uh, Lad is my debut feature film. It's a coming of age story about a teenage boy called Tom Proctor whose dad dies suddenly and he starts to um, have all sorts of crises. His his mum's threatened to lose the house, his brother's about to leave him and he goes off the rails, he's paired with a park ranger and then it's really a film about how that friendship helps him to come to terms with his loss. Because for you, that's kind of rooted in your own personal experience as well, isn't it? Yeah, I was mentored by a park ranger when I was about 15, 16, growing up in the Yorkshire Dales, a really lovely chap called Al and... It was uh, a relationship that I treasured and meant a lot to me. So when I was, you know, as a, a mature adult, as it were, I, I kept thinking about that impact that had on me. And I think there's just something powerful about mentorship stories anyway. You know, a lot of us have had mentors and uh, and the gift that they give us is something that, you know, never leaves you. And so you mentioned there that that relationship was something that was really special to you. But I've read about how you moved away from the Yorkshire Dales and how um, you kind of missed them a lot when you were younger. So you can really tell, I think, that Yorkshire and the Dales specifically are somewhere quite special to you. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we emigrated to Australia, Adelaide, when I was 16. Uh, I was happy to go and I had a, 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 a good time there. But I... My upbringing was such that we we lived in a, uh, a house on the edge of the village and, and after our house, it, there was no one else. And I could walk from my house and end up on the bouldery field called Norba where the, where the story opens. And it was, it was like having a, a back garden that was about three miles long and just spectacular and full of imagination and wonder. And I was obsessed with Lord of the Rings growing up. So for me leaving the front door basically transported me to wherever I wanted to go and that sense of wonder obviously didn't leave me and when I um, had the idea for the story and when I had the opportunity to go back to Yorkshire I was you know I was just falling back in love with a place that had always been a massive inspiration for me anyway. So with um, kind of regards to, to Lad and the kind of basis of it in Yorkshire, I imagine as a director, there are kind of a thousand things going through your head, loads of different ideas for films, especially because I know you've made short films before, but this was kind of like your first feature length film. Was that this always the one where in your head you were like, no, this is the first film I want to make? Or were, was there a few other films kind of in the, in the pipeline as well? Well, I, I think it came, and this is, my memory should be better than this, I think it came after I'd already written a film called Black Ice, which uh, is set in Alaska about a uh, a man who uncovers a, a corporate oil conspiracy. So quite a different beast. But what connects them, I suppose, is that I'm generally inspired by location and inspired by places that have had an impact on me. And Alaska was another one. I, I used to go there in my summers when I was at uni and I'd spend every other summer holidays in Alaska. And so... That also resonates with me, but um, I think it was the idea that one piece of advice you often hear is to write about what you know and and maybe to you know even make something that you know or only that you, only you could make. And then, and it's not necessarily the case that no one else could make this story or no one else had this experience, but I certainly could, uh, and, and and I seemed to be able to provide a window on a very specific sort of experience and identity that um, uh, that I was passionate about, you know, and that hopefully other people would also um, be drawn to. Making the film, did it almost like change your perspective of any kind of element of Yorkshire or kind of your experience growing up or... Did it only kind of make you more nostalgic or um, more fond of the place? The wonderful thing was that nothing had changed. Almost nothing. I mean, I, I was talk, being sort of um, introduced to people from my childhood who were still doing the same jobs or had, had married the other person from the village or the sense of belonging and place in, in that particular part of the Dales is just quite extraordinary. And that was really thrilling to me um oh that was yeah so what was really fun about it was that at one of the aud auditions I met I know maybe you're going to talk to me about casting in a moment but I met 
uh, the kid who would become the lead role. And he was from the same village as me. And his dad had actually been at my school in my brother's year. And he was a real pillar of the community. And what was terrific was we only really could have made this film in part because we cast Breton as the lead role, but also because we, we almost cast his dad as our fixer. Like a bit like when you go to on, on safari or you go to um, Afghanistan and you need a local who's going to network you into all the places. Well, it, Breton's dad, Richard, was just that person. And if ever we needed to get hold of a, a, a muck spreader or, or a barn or find something, he'd just get on the phone and, and, and it would happen. And it was that sense of community that really impacted me and really made me feel nostalgic for, the, for that place. And, um, and that's wonderful that that shows no sign of changing. Yeah. And you had a lot of help from the community, I guess, as well, with the making of the film, which I imagine would have been really lovely to come back to after so long away. Yeah, I mean, I we obviously it had to be a local production. There was um, a, a possibility that I was revisiting a place I hadn't lived in at that point for well over 10 years. And I didn't want it to be an outsider production. I wanted it to be told by the people that lived there and to bear their stories. So we went about it um, by workshopping it and casting from the community and, and various crew members sort of joined us that had never really worked before. Um, so it, yeah, and there, were, and there was a tiny budget, you know, we, on a practical level, you, you can't bring in lots of people and put them in hotels. It's too expensive. So you, you really want to try and get people who living at home and just driving in each day and, and all for all of that, plus the mixing of people and bringing together people with lots of experience and, and less experience from the community and some people from further field. Um, just was a really bonding sort of experience. I mean, we're only a small crew, maybe 15, 20, but I, I, there's not one of them that, you know, I wouldn't consider ringing and contacting today and catching up with. And, you know, and a lot of them gone on to really, really great things. And this was almost now a decade ago, if not a decade, actually. Um, how does it feel as kind of you've had this project that you've worked on and you've had the chance to kind of look back at it over a long period of time and then it kind of rises to the surface again and finds some more traction? How does that feel as a director? Um, hard to summarise, if only because I, I was never able to leave it. Um, it was 10 years ago we were shooting this month, this is when we started shooting, uh, about eight years since we, since I delivered the edit and wrapped. And each year there's been some version of Lad in my life, whether it's touring the film or going to a festival or trying a different form of distribution. Um, the big difference now is we really seem to have broken through, at least on a certain level. We've courtesy of the streamers and 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 because um in the last year there's been um you know i think more experimentation by people in terms of what they view but also even at this very particular moment there's a need for stories that are uplifting and give us hope and i wrote and made lad in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crash and yet i'm sort of a decade later still um, having a film that reflects on how when you're faced with adversity, you can rise above it. And all those factors have sort of come to play to make this um, a very poignant moment. And of course, no doubt about it, it matters a great deal to me because for so many years there, I'd made a film that lots of people who had seen it had liked and had been affected by and had sat through screenings where people are laughing and crying. But there was a very real possibility that it just wouldn't exist. It it would be as though it had never been made because no, if no one sees it, it, it doesn't exist. So yeah. there's a sense of relief, a real sense of um, relief and of duty sort of sort of performed. I, I I would always want it to. I well, I still want it to go out on cinemas. I still hope for more for it, and I want it to have more presence worldwide so I, you know maybe this is just the beginning and I've got another 10-year journey ahead I don't know.
<laughs> we can hope. You touched on something there, though, that I think is quite important, um, where you said that th there's a tale like this and we all kind of need that uplifting um, kind of coming of age tale uh, against adversity. Do you think that that is the main selling point of the film, that it's kind of going to keep it timeless and, like you said, perhaps in like another 10 years still be very culturally relevant? Yeah, I think, I, I mean, uh, it's not for me to call it a classic film, but it was made in a classic way in that it didn't need to belong in a particular time. It, the, 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 the things being discussed in the story are sort of universal and timeless. So in that sense, I wasn't particularly worried that it would age, but um, I certainly personally really like films that aren't just bleak. And my inspirations for this film were the ones like Brastoff and Full Monty and, um, uh, I'm sure there's going to be others that have slipped my mind, but I think what can happen in British films that I really love is when the humour is matched by the drama and and it, even the sorrow, so that you have a real full 360 um, range of experiences and feelings, and and it's relatable and it's grounded in honesty. Or oh, Billy Elliot's another good example. You know, I, I I just think there's a great tradition there of British filmmaking that I was certainly trying to emulate and. Um, you know, and, and I think people do uh, see that or feel that in the film.